My name is Rocco Galati. Seated to my immediate left is uh, Ann Emmett, and to her immediate left is uh, Mr. William Krem. And they're two of the co-plaintiffs in uh, an action that uh, they filed as plaintiffs along with Cummer, the Committee on Monetary and Economic Reform, uh, against the Minister of Finance and the Bank of Canada. It challenges uh, uh, the abdication of sovereignty and governance uh, in handing over monetary, financial, and socio-economic policy through finances to foreign private entities and a refusal to abide by and, and implement the terms of Bank of Canada Act with respect uh, to loans, with respect to human capital spending, such as hospital, health, education, and so forth. The second aspect of the challenge uh, constitutionally challenges the government's refusal to publish and set out the actual revenues that are collected or collected collectable uh, before the transfer back of tax credits before net revenue is calculated and announced every year. The, the effect of this is that MPs in Parliament, Canadians in general, are completely left in the dark about the actual revenues Canada collects every year before the transfer credits go back, with the consequence that no real debate can be had on whether in any particular year a deficit is necessary, and if it's necessary, where the money or loans should come from. Uh, this is a constitutional violation that goes to the foundation of our, our system in terms of the rule of law. The Bank of Canada is actually organized as a private bank and it was nationalized only in the year before the outbreak of the war. And by doing so, Canada's record, economic record, the cost of the war to it, far more successful than that of the United States or Britain who had private central banks. You understand that because the Bank of Canada belongs to us and we earned that as a result of the conscience, uh, consciousness and concern that arose in, in Canadian people at the time of the, of the Great Depression uh, that Bill was talking about a minute ago. And so here the government is able to create money that we need for schools, for hospitals, for health care, for the environment at little or no interest. And it's borrowing it instead from private banks who create that money out of thin air. It's nothing but debt. It's nothing but numbers in a computer. After we allow them to make money out of uh, thin air, we allow them to collect interest uh, at our expense on, 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 on the money they lend. Then, when they do get into difficulties, which they do because we've granted them deregulation that they, that they require, then we are told that we have a deficit. And that's that is, we must pay off the debt, we must pay off the deficit at the expense of edu excuse me, education, health care, and all the rest of it. How clever is this? It's time to challenge that system. Our government does not have the constitutional jurisdiction to govern at the behest of foreign private entities, banking or otherwise. The Bank of Canada, in fact, also fully bankrolled the Second World War. And the St. Lawrence Seaway. And the St. Lawrence, and, and so on. And, and, and so the, for the government to pretend that this is new, this is a, this is a crazy new idea, is, is just a fallacy. That's why the bank was set up in the first place, so we would have, as Canadians, control over our own monetary policy as it, uh, as it affects our socioeconomic policies. Between 1981 and 1995, the federal government collected from uh, income tax something like $619.2 billion. It paid in interest <clears throat> to private money lenders $428.2 billion. You can't allow a foreign private entities in secret meetings to govern your country. And that's, and that's what's happening. Uh, through uh, with respect to the to the uh, uh, 
the, the, the way banking exerts its influence because they're ignoring the Bank of Canada and moreover they're ignoring their constitutional duty to properly account uh, in the budgetary process. During the time of the G20 infamous meeting down in Toronto, there was a seminar downtown at which Paul Martin, you will remember, as finance minister and, and, uh, and prime minister of this country, Paul Martin was the keynote speaker. And this was his message. Nation states can no longer handle their own economies. There must be international laws, and those laws must be mandatory and enforceable. What we must have is global economic governance. Now I think that we are at a defining moment in history and I think that democracy is in deep, deep trouble. But I really think that we are at a, a great watershed and we will either make the right choices and challenge this dysfunctional, obsolete, wasteful, destructive economic system that depends on exploitation, on growth, on destruction, or we, I think, are at the edge of a very dark period. That is my motivation for doing whatever I can to bring to the attention of the Canadian people this option and the threat that they face.